Well, good morning, everybody. It is the morning after with Nick and Big J. Welcome to Friday. We made it through another week, Big God, J. Dude, TGIF. And we are halfway through the month of November as of today, Big J. God, man, that means we're it's almost another year. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, Jesus. Yeah. By uh, by the law of calendars that we all have for some reason agreed to adhere to, we are almost at the yeah. end of 2024. Can you imagine the world trying to agree on a calendar now? Now? I can't imagine us trying to agree on anything. <laughs> yeah. uh, calendar being the least of uh, it. It's even the stuff we do agree on doesn't get done. Uh-huh. So I don't know. But I thank don't... God they did that back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Figured that out. Yeah. The, the only thing that seems to work is when things are grandfathered in for years and years and years and years and years. And then even if we think it should change, we don't do it. Yeah. We just don't. We have become the... Uh, we were talking about procrastinating yesterday. I don't know if it's procrastination or just mastering the art of not getting anything done, but we are good at it, dude. But uh, I am uh, I am happy to report that the calendar still is in place. So, Big J, uh, can we get an early grade on 2024? Uh, no. Let's wait. Incomplete? <laughs> Let's wait a few more months to oh, see. Oh, no. Well, I, I yeah, can't. Goes. That's not good reporting for 2024. So far, so bad, according to Big J. But uh, hopefully the month of November is treating you well so far. We have a fairly big show today. Lots of guests popping by, including Lounge at the End of the Universe. Our friend Craig Gass is going to join us in the 9 o'clock hour. We are going to have a whole lot of fun today, guaranteed, with lots of laughs and lots of good times. We have tickets to give away to the Devil's Wear Prada. Uh, that show's coming up on the 20th, so it's five days away at the Knitting Factory Concert House. We are excited to hook you up with that. We got snowmobile show tickets over the course of the show today. Big J will have his song of the week for you any uh any hints on to that and people that are looking forward to that uh yeah first side project from uh, a pretty significant band here for the x okay so uh you'll get a little taste of that coming up before we hit seven o'clock this morning we have an opportunity for you to qualify for our holiday treasure that's a pretty big deal we're gonna give away ten thousand dollars on december 10th and a bunch of people are gonna win some money we'd like it to be you And so your opportunity to be a part of that is coming up in the 7 o'clock hour, a little bit after 7.40 this morning. So you're going to want to keep tuning in for a chance to win some money, too. So it's a nice little Friday show, a great little way to wrap up the week, Big J. Damn right. All we got to do is not screw it up. And you know what? If history is any indication, we're going to do okay. Yeah. I like that positivity. Let's get started with some music as well. Everlast kicking things off here this morning on The Morning After with Nick and Big J on The X. In search of news. Important stuff. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Thanksgiving only a couple of weeks away, so it should not be surprising that if you pop into a Albertsons here in the Treasure Valley, you'll see that they are hosting their annual Thanksgiving turkey drive. It's an opportunity for them to team up with the Boise Rescue Mission to help collect some turkeys for some families that are looking to celebrate the holiday but have some food instability and aren't able to do that. They have a goal. They want to collect at least 5,000 turkeys to distribute to the community this Thanksgiving. But really, the ideal target is closer to 10,000, to be honest. So there will be shopping carts near store exits at all Treasure Valley Albertsons where you can drop off a turkey after purchase if you would like to donate to this particular cause. And then again, it will go directly to the Boise Rescue Mission's effort to provide to the community with Thanksgiving as well as Christmas meals. So if they exceed the number they're looking for, they'll save some of those for Christmas time, Big J. Nice. And you can have a Christmas bird. So a way to give back to the community, help out the Boise Rescue Mission, and help out your fellow citizens here in the Treasure Valley. If you pop into an Albertsons, you can certainly do that. And you can also give monetarily at the checkout as well. That will help and will also go directly to the Boise Rescue Mission if you're in a giving mood this holiday season. And I guess, Big J, it's officially holiday season, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't escape it. So give a little bit. It's, again, every single Albertsons here in the Treasure Valley. So enjoy it if you have an opportunity and give if you can. Your Boise State Broncos are on the road this weekend, tomorrow night at San Jose State at the CEFCU Stadium. The kickoff will happen around 5 o'clock. It'll be on CBS Sports Network if you're looking to watch the game. Your Boise State Broncos are only favored by 14 in this matchup. Uh, Not as nearly as big as they were favored last week against Nevada, but perhaps Vegas is like, maybe we should take that down a notch. Also, San Jose State's not a bad football team. Yeah, they've got a pretty decent uh, record. Big J? Six and three, I think. Your final score prediction, please. Uh, let's go 42-20 Broncos. All right. This is the first time Big J has not picked the Broncos to score 50 points this season. Let's see how it goes. 
But uh, Big J still likes them to cover and to win handily on the road. They yes? have to. They have to. I know. Well, you said that last lose. week. I though. know, but they need, now I think they realize it. All right, they probably realized it last week. I don't know what the hiccup was, but we will see how it all I, comes I, together. I think the hiccup might have been Choate. Coach Choate there for uh, the Nevada. Former Bronco coach. So. Um, do you have any predictions about what Ashton Shenty is going to do? Uh, let's give him another 200 yards. All right. Will he play the whole game? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, they, he needs to, man. We, they, you know, they, a he needs to win the Heisman, and they need to make it into the playoff for real, and not just uh, an early uh, playoff round prediction. What? You know, when they when they come out with the 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 playoff teams, you know, they do it every week now, every Sunday night. Oh, sure, 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 sure. You're saying it means need nothing make- right now Correct. until it's it means something. I know, yeah, but uh, for some reason they turn that into entertainment when nothing. Yeah. The, 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 you're right; they absolutely mean nothing until the end of the season. But hey, it's fun. Yeah, uh, you could say you were there for a little while, I guess, if you happen to fade away down the stretch. If we can give a show recommendation, Big J, and you enjoy comedy, you enjoy uh, video games, then I don't know what you're doing not watching Mythic Quest on Apple TV. It is from Rob McElhenney, who, of course, is part of the Always Sunny crowd. Uh, It's a really, really funny show about developing video games in a video game company. Uh, And uh, it will come back for a fourth season beginning on January 29th. Apple TV Plus announced that a two episode premiere. Uh, and it's a very funny show. They also announced a spinoff of that show, so it's successful as well for Apple TV. Uh, it's been nominated for a bunch of Emmy Awards. It's won a couple as well, and it's a very good show, so I want to give it a shout-out. Very happy that it's coming back for season number four, and if you have uh, Apple TV Plus and you haven't watched it yet, recommend it. Is it worth getting Apple TV Plus just for that show? I don't know, man. I Is mean, it? There's a lot of stuff out there. I, I would be hard-pressed to recommend like, I can't think of a single show that I would say it's so amazing. You have to spend a X amount of dollars a month just to have access to it. But if you like that kind of stuff, I don't think you'll be disappointed in that particular show. Like, I mean, even if you like Stranger Things, I'm like, is that worth $14 a month? No, probably not. I mean, well, you could wait two or three years before, <laughs> you know, right. it's money. And so... I have a hard pr- time saying you need to spend money to see this show, but if you already have a subscription and you haven't taken a chance on it uh, and you like comedies, it is a show that I do highly recommend to you. Who's it is a it? lot of fun. Rob McElhenney from All of a Sunday Philadelphia. Oh, he's local in it. He yeah. himself, he's he, not just producing he's it He's a star. Danny Pudi from, uh, from Community is also in it. A couple of people from All of a Sunday are in it as well because okay. it's a Rob McElhenney show. So uh, it, it's got, I, I don't know, it's not celebrity packed, but again, it's a very funny show. About a company that develops got some pedigree, yeah, like uh, like a World of Warcrafts esque online game, and the terribleness and the goofiness that goes along with it, and them trying to come up with a script, an idea, and a plot for these games and keep it a successful thing. It's it's a funny, yeah, it's I've, a funny. I actually never heard of it. You never heard of it? No, dude, I yeah. have, but I don't. I, I think we have an Apple Plus subscription, but we never use it. We never look at anything on there. So, well, what, what, you're wasting your money. Then. Yeah. Or, right. or are you not paying for it and it's part of somebody else's thing and you're uh, jumping on board? No, I, I think we're paying. Yeah, well, then think about it. I think you like it. But then again, you don't like Always Sunny in Philadelphia, right? No, that's not true. Oh, okay. I think it's very funny. Uh, I, but you're not watching it, right? Like the new I season? I mean, it's, when it, yeah, when it's on, it's on. Got it. I'll you don't it. seek it out. Uh, I would I would, I would, would not say that this show is very different from Always Sunny. Always Sunny is very irreverent and on oh, yeah. the line and about that. This is... This is a little bit more, uh, I would say, inclusive like, and all friendly. Like and they're trying to be real human beings. Yeah, yeah. There's still some. Sc- I mean, listen, Rob McElhenney still plays a scumbag. He's really good at it. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's a different type of scumbag. Morning after with Nick and Big J. There's your first round of important stuff. It is the X Rock. <laughs> Traffic. That is Jelly Roll. That is Liar here on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Big J, we are going to do a special edition of Judge Big J here Uh-oh. because uh, we're going to need your opinion to weigh in on something that I think you might actually have an educated opinion on. And we're talking about copyright law, Big J. Oh, OK. But it is a uh, a battle, a deep fry legal battle, if you will. Deep fry. Yeah. Cooking between two of the largest providers of fried chicken in the marketplace here in the United States of America. One is called Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm sure you've mm-hmm. heard of it. The other, Church's Chicken. You've heard of that as well? Church's Chicken, yes, but I've never had. Never had it, huh? No. 
How come? Is it just never a craving, there's, there's, or where is there one around? I thought there was one around no, here. There but is no. Maybe I'm just confused, but uh, they are battling all the fried chicken joints. Each other in uh, in a battle uh, over a term called original recipe, Big J. Now KFC claims they hold the rights to the phrase original recipe, and they are suing churches for using that particular phrase in their advertising as well. And they think it's going to create confusion in the marketplace and dilute the original recipe mark that KFC has. Now, uh, here is where it gets complicated, Big J, and where Judge Big J is going to need to step in. Now, it is true that KFC holds a copyright about original recipe, but they have trademarked the phrase KFC and Kentucky Fried Chicken original recipe, not just the two words it's specific, original recipe. Yeah, it's specific to yes. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yes. Yeah. And so churches realize that and they're like, well, listen, we've got an original recipe of our own. It's Church's not, it, original recipe. That's exactly what they're calling it. And they're calling it their original recipe chicken, or you can get the crunchy just like you can uh, there at KFC. And now KFC is upset about it. Churches have been doing this for a couple of years, but now it's going to the courts and have to be decided the legal experts say that it's going to be tough for kfc to prove that while they have a trademark to three and five word phrases that they should also default to a two word phrase because that's just not how copyrights work but i leave it in your hands big j as the capable judge big j who should win this battle well i mean it's clear that they're saying their copyright is kfc's original fried chicken original recipe original recipe yes that's, I mean, that that's pretty specific. So it's not just original fried, you know, chicken. Original recipe. Yeah, original recipe. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to say uh, they don't have a leg to stand on there. You are ruling in favor of churches? Yes. We will see. Uh, also, and Popeyes. They, they can start their own. To say, there is no copyright for those two words because they, they have a hard time copywriting fairly generic statements right now. And uh, and that would, I would, I would tend to agree, would be one of them. But we will see if it becomes an issue in the courts or if they decide that maybe that's that's just enough. I mean, in case you shouldn't you be able to copyright just regular everyday phrases anyway. Yeah, but it happens more I, often I know. than you think. It's ridiculous. Uh, and so it is something. Like Taco Tuesday. To keep, right. <laughs> is that officially copyrighted now? No, I, I think they broke that. Okay. They broke that. Oh, that's right. Because it, it, it was, was Taco, Taco John's. John's. Yeah. And now no it's, offense, Taco John's. Now it's everybody. I love you. But we will see what happens and what shakes down in a official court of law. But it sounds like Big J is ruling in favor of churches. Yep. Now, Judge Big J, best fried chicken out there. Go. Albertsons. Okay. That's the right answer. Morning after with Nick and Big J. There is your Judge Big J update. We'll get your song of the week next on the X. The step of a down chop suey here on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Every Friday, Big J selects a song to hopefully get the blood flowing as you head into the weekend and pump you up a little bit. First, you hear the what, then you find out the why. Big J, what is it today? Today is uh, Eric Bass Presents Mind Control. All right, we're going to hear it, and then we're going to learn all about it. It's the X Rocks. All right, there's Mind Control by Eric Bass here on the morning after. Eric with, Bass Presents. Sorry, Eric Bass Presents. Uh, the morning after with Nick and Big J. And uh, you maybe don't know who Eric Bass Presents is, but you know the larger scope of what he is yes yeah he is the bass player for shinedown uh also has produced the last three albums uh w- with the band and uh he's been working on this uh for a little bit he's got an album that's gonna be coming out i had a name it's a concept album he has uh done he's played every instrument he does everything produced this whole thing all uh by himself and uh that is uh kind of remarkable and uh it's very interesting uh it, the, <laughs> the concept is Mind-blowing and uh, interesting. Uh, it's a large part of it. This is a part of a story uh, of, of uh, here's what it says. Inspired by a neurodivergence and set within a sprawling new world. So uh, it okay. is a concept album. And uh, on this song, uh, we hear the evil dictator Devarian articulating his disdain for the citizen he has imprisoned. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll be talking to him uh, sometime here in the new future about all this. All but right. uh, I'm interested to hear the rest of this because uh, it's pretty unique and sounds a lot different from Shinedown, that's for sure. Yeah, it does. Uh, and so uh, there you go. I imagine you'll hear a little bit more of it, maybe it, uh, pop up on Cage Match or exclusive or something like that. Yeah. You can let us know what you think about it as well. Morning After with Nick and Big J. Some important stuff on the way on the x Rocks. Important stuff. 
on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Holiday season is around the corner, and if you have a teenager on your list, you know it's almost impossible to get them to talk about what they want for, for Christmas. It's crazy how what? hard. Oh, dude. It's like pulling teeth. Like, you know, they have some things, but like it's either incredibly elaborate or uh, way too small for anything. And my, I, when I talk to my son, it's like it's so hard for him to like go. I don't know, man. What do you want for what do you want? for? I don't know. I don't know. It's like, God, dang. But uh, uh, good news. There are people doing that hard work for us. And it turns out uh, if you have anybody on your list from 10 to 17, uh, video games that that's that's yeah. what they want 76 percent of kids in that age range are, are going to want video games this year uh, a slight increase over last year 72 percent asked for gaming related gifts consoles at the top of the wish list with 48 percent hoping for a new system altogether meanwhile 41 percent say they have some particular titles they'd like to unwrap the survey has some good news for these kids uh you're gonna get around and the average parent spends on uh, about 312 dollars on gifts every year for each kid uh followed by uh and video games is usually number one or electronics is number one number two money and gift cards number three clothes big j yeah. that's pretty much the standard operating procedure for every parent uh, especially in the modern times just fall into that video game safety net and uh and come what may you know right and that's not a bad theory and hopefully it works out for all parties involved but just aim for the electronics and you should be okay we got the Broncos playing on Saturday night at San Jose State. Tick kickoff is at 5 o'clock on CBS Sports Network. Uh, Boise's favored by 14. Big J, your final score prediction again. 42 to 20, Broncos. Uh, and we will see if that comes to fruition. They are favored big, and hopefully that is the case. But there's another sporting event tonight, Big J. Will you be partaking in the Netflix fight of the year? Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, a little bit maybe. I, I don't know. I've got a, an event that I'm going to be at, but they have said, hey, we'll have the fight on. So. All right. So maybe you'll be able to check it out. Uh, beginning at 6 o'clock Idaho time, Netflix will live stream the boxing match between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. Uh, of course, there was a weigh-in last night and things got chippy, although I do believe that any kind of altercation that happens at a weigh-in is all part of the show, and that's more acting than anything else. They got together, Big J. Listen, and don't step on Mike Tyson's toe, man. And Mike Tyson slapped him in the face. And uh, and then they were quickly pulled away. And, of course, it went viral. That's how these yeah, things go. Yeah, this is how you know this was not, uh, was, was something that was at least planned. Or Tyson, with the discipline, he slapped him instead of punched him. Right. Right. But I tell you what, it was pretty fast. And then he went exa- right onto Instagram and posted with a video. I mean, listen, they're, yeah. they're, they're hyping up the fight. That's the whole point. It was the a weird point. thing. Like, Jake Paul, he, like, did a, uh, like a, a somersault roll. <laughs> And then, that. and then, just briefly, somewhat, slightly stepped on Mike Tyson's toe, and he's got a thing about his feet, and so uh, he slapped him, and then that uh, whole thing came out. Yeah, it was it was bizarre. I mean, again, I think everybody. I, I don't know anybody that's rooting for Jake Paul. I think everybody wants Mike Tyson to win, which is crazy. I think considering Jake Paul's okay with that. Mike Tyson, yeah, yeah. No, listen, yeah. he's good at playing the villain. Yeah, that's what he's he does. Good at the heel, man. Right, and so he he he. That's exactly what he's going for. Because again, at the end of the day, without a villain, nobody cares about this fight. Right, and so that's what makes people want to tune in, and uh, and Netflix want to pay them millions upon millions of dollars. Is Everybody wants to see an a-hole get his jaw, you know, crushed. And so we will see if it happens. Again, these are strategically picked fights. And uh, while Mike Tyson looks incredible for uh, for (coughs) how old he is, he's just 58 years old. Yeah. And so uh, stamina could be an issue, and that's sometimes all it takes. Who knows? Sometimes you don't need stamina. Stamina? Huh? Stamina. I mean, after you punch somebody and they fall down, you don't need to do any more work. Sure. Uh, but you know, J- M- Jake Paul has t- taken on a lot of really great former boxers in his career. Again, he strategically picked them where they're well past their prime, and so it- it's 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 not the first time this has happened. I don't know. I won't be able to check it out. So you don't uh, have Netflix? I, I do have Netflix. Oh. I just have I have other things going on tonight, and so I'll see what happens when I see what happens. But uh, and this is also Netflix's uh, opportunity to become more and more like a cable network and air things live. Last time they did it, it was the Chris Rock situation where they did the live stand-up yeah. special. There were some technical difficulties at the beginning of that, so we'll see how this goes. But they're kind of test-running this because, don't forget, next year, Netflix will be the home of WWE Monday Night Raw, which will be 100% live as well. 
So we'll see how this goes. It's a big night for Netflix. They expect a lot of eyeballs to tune into it. So we'll see how the servers go and if they shut things down. If you have been waiting for the movie Transformers 1 but didn't want to see in the theaters, it starts streaming today on Paramount+. Plus. Of course, this is the animated film uh, that talks about the origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron. Chris Hemsworth is involved. Brian Tyree Henry, former guest of The Morning After, also uh, the star of the movie along with the star-studded voice cast. So if you wanted to check out the Transformers animated film, today's the day you can do so finally on streaming. Morning After with Nick and Big J. We are going to go to hell. That's happening next on the X Rocks. Eight stories that are incredibly f***ed up. Oh, man, we're going to hell. What the hell? The Morning After with Nick and Big J on 100.3 The X Rocks. To the internet we go for today's We're Going to Hell story because it's not exactly a surprise. Anybody that's kind of been paying attention over the last couple years knows how much of a problem cyber pop you know like crimes are identity theft stealing right. money getting into accounts being hacked having your identity stolen all these things are at an all-time high for a lot of reasons uh the most important of which is well we're online more than ever a lot of our finances a lot of our money a lot of what we deal with is all handled via the internet and a lot of sensitive information can be out there fairly easy and can the people that know how to get their hands on it can get their hands on it but the other side to this equation is big j we do not do ourselves any favor no uh, a lot of the times that uh, that identities are stolen or passwords are hacked or whatever the case may be is because we make it so damn easy for people to go in and get to our bleep that it's a wonder why any of us have money to begin with okay because they have put it out once again for 2024 the number one password manager in the world have released the number one passwords in uh, countries across the world including the united states of america and by far and away big j even though they surveyed 24 countries america still has the easiest to hack passwords in the world why do you think that is uh, Why are other countries getting it and we can't seem to wrap our heads around the fact that we need to have a little bit more complex passwords so that our stuff doesn't get stolen? I, I'd say there's, well, you know, population-wise, there's a, there's a lot more people in the United States than a lot of those other countries. And you break them down individually, so you've got that working against you. But also, you've got, uh, you know, older people i don't know i don't know the breakdown of demographics but i would say the older you are the easier your password is probably going to be and you know you throw in how the rural areas some people maybe not you know the custom to a lot of you know technology but there could be some reasons i guess uh and if that is the case with you or you have any of these passwords may we suggest you change them as quickly as possible yeah change it from one two three four five one two three four five six is actually the number yeah. two password in the United States. One two three four five six seven eight, which if you need eight characters, yeah. comes in at number seven. Flip it over and go eight <laughs> seven six five four three two one. No, I think maybe yeah. there's some sort of that, combination right? that that should be a part of it. Number one password in the United States is secret. That's it. <laughs> uh, and then we already mentioned what number I mean, two is. Half of that. I'm gonna. Say, here's the problem: is that both of those passwords usually aren't accepted anymore as password <laughs> right? because you, you need a special character uh -huh. you need a capital letter uh -huh. that sort of stuff so how they're getting away with these i don't know uh believe it or not big j and we even have a, a little sweeper that kind of makes fun of this but the word password shows up three times in the top 10 for most common passwords in the united states of america password all lowercase is number three password one all lowercase is number six and then password with a capital p is number 10 <laughs> Uh, and so then you get into things like QWERTY123, QWERTY1 for the keyboard. Uh, all the numbers 1 through 9 comes in at number 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is number 9. ABC123 is number 10. I love you is number 12, Big J. I love you. Baseball is number 14. Nothing but ones comes in at number 16. And then there's things like princess, football, monkey, and sunshine all on the list as well. And so that's what makes it easy. Usually what ends up happening is hackers try some sort of form of these first, and that's what gets them into where they need yeah. to go, and the rest is all gravy. So a reminder, if you have any really, really simple passwords, 
you might want to change them. Listen, it's okay if you have it on like your Domino's account, okay? I'm talking about like your bank account, those kind of things yeah. that have sensitive information, maybe credit card stuff attached to it. You need to make sure you protect it as much as possible, okay? Agreed, man. We have to try to, I mean, we are the first line of defense here. And if we're making things like secret and password our passwords, we're not putting up much of a fight. And uh, and then and then we go in our bank account and go, what, what the hell? Where, where did all my money go? Why didn't my password password work to protect myself? And then we get mad at a lot of things. So we can do better. But again, we're not the only ones. Uh, Canada's number one password is QWERTY123, which of course pops up. The number one password in the world is I love you one. So, I mean, there's lots of things that go on, lots of commonalities there. It's just a matter of making it uh, difficult for people to yeah. take your stuff, okay? Morning after with Nick and Big J. There's your We're Going to Hell story. It is the X Rocks. Here's traffic. Give you this holiday season that you don't already have. I don't know, hepatitis? <laughs> that you don't already have. That was harsh. Let's play the X's Carol Quiz to get you qualified for our holiday treasure on 100.3. The X rocks. Yeah, it's going to be a good one, man. $10,000 up for grabs on December 10th. We'd like you to win your share of it. In order to do so, you need to get qualified, and you can do so by calling us right now, 208-287-1003, and playing a little game called the Carol Quiz. Big J is going to read you three Christmas Carol song titles. Two of those are made up. One of them is an actual Christmas Carol. If you can nail the one that is the actual Christmas Carol, congratulations, you are qualified, and you will be part of our big giveaway party happening at Barbarian Brewing in Garden City on December 10th. Special thank you to Dennis Dillon Autos Group, Mountain Health Co-op, and CBH Homes for this. And Big J, we've been doing this uh, all this week, and there have been some easy ones. I would say this one's yeah. fairly challenging. Agree yes, or disagree? I was going to say that myself. But we will go until we get ourselves a qualifier. So we wish everybody the best of luck. Big J, are you ready? Yeah. Then to the phones we go. Hello, the X. Good morning. Good morning, sir. What's your name? Sean. All right, Sean. Big J is going to read you three song titles. You got to nail the actual Christmas carol. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ho, ho, ho. Here we go. <laughs> Coventry Carol. Wreath of Love or Children Laughing? Children Laughing. Children Laughing is not a Christmas oh. carol. Sorry, Sean, that is incorrect. Like we said, it's a tough one this particular uh, day, but uh, best of luck. We're going to go until we get it. Hello, the X. Hey, it is Jordan. All right, man. Uh, Big J is ready to go. Here comes your three songs Coventry Carol, Wreath of Love, or Children Laughing. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one. Coventry Carol is correct. You nailed it, man. Uh, the giveaway was in the title. Yep, Carol is actually part of it, but Coventry Carol is a Christmas Carol. Good job. Hang on one second. We will hook you up with all the information that you need to join us at Barbarian Brewing in Garden City there on December 10th. It's going to be a good time, and you're qualified for the holiday treasure courtesy of the X. There you go. Uh, Coventry Carol, you might have to look it up. It may not be one you're totally familiar with, but no, it is a very it. much a traditional Christmas carol, an old school one, if you will, Big J. Come to the Coventry. Yeah, you nailed it. See, you did know what it yeah. was. Morning after with Nick and Big J. There's your carol quiz. We got some important stuff on the way and pop culture smackdown. It's the X Rocks. <laughs> Important stuff. Hey, what's going on in the news today? The morning after with Nick and Big J. Lots of places you can choose from to have food delivered to your home, but Uber Eats is the number one company that does that here in the United States of America, and they have released their annual cravings report that includes some very interesting combos, but also the highest rank combos delivered all year in the United States of America. If you had a guess, Big J, across all 50 states, what combination or what particular dishes do you think were delivered the most to Americans? I don't know. What does that mean? That means what do people most order on Uber Eats? I'm going to go with uh, taco. Nope. Uh, coming in at number six on the list. What? Yep. Uh, hamburgers. I have no idea. Number two. Number two. Okay. Yep. We talked about it earlier this morning. Does that help? 
Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Chicken is the oh, number yeah. one fried thing chicken. Ordered. Fried chicken. Uh, chicken slash chicken tenders, uh, all along with some fries, the number one combo uh, that is delivered to uh, houses across the United States. Number three is a bit of a surprise. We already talked in hamburgers, burgers of some kind. Number two. Number three, ramen with a soft boiled egg is the number three thing that is delivered to Where, where are you places. ordering that? Like, th- listen, this is not for us. There's a lot of ramen places no, in the United States. I know that, but I'm, I'm saying here, you know, we're... At least I feel like, you know, I, I'm in a rulish area. There's no way I would ever order ramen from anywhere. It would be cold by the time it got to me, uh, for that, the most part. Well, listen, that's that's a that's a battle you fight with every order you get delivered uh, hmm. in this day and age, uh, depending on how fast it gets to where you are. But like ordering ramen to be delivered would be difficult. Uh, well, I mean... Like soup. Yeah. Like who's ordering soup? Lots of people order. It's soup season, buddy. I mean, they Make have it. You put it in like, you know containers that have covers on them it's pretty easy to get to you if you want it uh like any like soda you know what i mean i mean that gets delivered too either well i mean there's a lot of people that ban that be ordering Uh, drinks but uh uh, you know uh, as mentioned uh number six fajitas and tacos come in there uh fish in some way shape or form comes in at number four and then uh, other kind of uh, Chinese or Japanese traditional food comes in at number seven. So wow. we are a chicken, burgers, and uh, and then I guess uh, ramen country here in the United States of America, according to Uber Eats. So there's lots of places you can choose from, but those apparently are the ones that we rely on for delivery the most. Big sporting event tonight, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson on Netflix. That will start at 6 o'clock uh, Boise time. They probably won't get into the ring until... Closer to 738, if I had to guess. There's an opening bout and probably a lot of pomp and circumstance involved in that as well. But you can check that out if you like. Your Boise State Broncos, number 13 in the nation, heading to San Diego, uh, excuse me, San Jose State to take on the Spartans on Saturday, 5 p.m. kickoff. CBS Sports Network has the telecast. Final score prediction, Big J. 42-20 Broncos. We'll see how it all works out. Uh, we already uh, know the damage done. Uh, you may have saw some of the footage when Hurricane Milton hit in October where it ripped off a lot of the roof for the Tampa Bay Rays stadium there. Yeah. Uh, they got the the numbers in. It's going to cost about $57 million to fix Tropicana Field after that damage done by the hurricane. And uh, they've already said there's absolutely no way the work will be completed in time for the Rays to open up their season next season. So... The plan now will be to play the 2025 season in its entirety at Tampa's Steinbrenner Field. That happens to be the spring training home of the rival New York Yankees. And so that will be the home of the Tampa Bay Rays this year while the repairs are done to Tropicana Field after Hurricane Milton hit. If you are a fan of Laura Croft and Tomb Raider, get ready. They're coming to a TV near you. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to write and executive produce the series for Amazon Prime Video, and apparently they found their Laura Croft, and it's Sophie Turner, Big J. You remember her for Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. Also stars in the British crime drama Joan and is slated to headline the Prime Video series, and she apparently is very excited about the project, as is Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who, of course, was involved in the new Indiana Jones. She also was a part of the hit uh, series on Amazon, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that ended up doing really well for the streamer, and so uh, she has an exclusive contract with them, and this is the next on her list. Are you interested in the further adventures of Tomb Raider? Yeah, why not? See what they got. You like Sophie Turner? Or I, is it really I, only see her in Game of Thrones? Yeah, I've only really seen her in Game of Thrones. You didn't see her so. as... Uh, as uh, Joan? Uh, yeah, Jean, no. Jean Grey. Oh, in, Jean uh, Grey. Oh, yeah. Uh, in X-Men Apply, or uh, Rise of Phoenix, whatever it was called. Uh, so uh, she will be the headliner in this particular case. And if you like that game or you like those movies, this will be a series now, not an actual movie. So yeah. kind of a further adventures of, if you will. Morning After with Nick and Big J. There's your important stuff. We will have your pop culture smackdown next on the X-Rock. Pop culture smackdown. Right. On the Morning After with Nick and Big J. Yeah, and we got a nice Morning After prize package for you, baby. We got tickets to Devil Wears Prada. That's happening next week at the Knitting Factory, Wednesday to be exact. I will be a great show. And then also next weekend is the Idaho Snowmobile Show. That's taking place out at their Ford Idaho Center. Uh, we'll get you set up with all of that if you can beat me in Pop Culture Smackdown. All right. You want to play? You better get on the phone. 208-287-1003. You'll be taking on Big J in a battle of pop culture supremacy if you can defeat the man. 
and make him take a knee, then you are going to grab this particular prize package, and all of this will be yours. Big J, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. To the phones we go. Hello, the X. Oh, okay, fine. Who's taking the knee now? Hello, the X. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. What's your name? Zach. All right, Zach, you're up first. What traditional lunch and dinner meat is often served with waffles at breakfast plates at breakfast places across the country? Chicken. Yeah, a running theme of today's show. Right. That is absolutely today's correct. Code word, fried chicken. Big J. Uh, who is the only two-time winner of the television show Survivor? You will get multiple choices. Thank God. Richard Hatch, Sandra Diaz, or Tony Vlachos? I'm going to go with Richard Hatch. Wrong. The no. first winner, right? First He's winner. First winner. And uh, only won once. Did and appear multiple times. IRS loser. But uh, not exactly correct. Uh, second guess, maybe? Uh, I had no idea, man. Third person. Uh, no. Wrong. It was Sandra Diaz. Right. Congrats, right. Sandra. The correct answer. The only two-time winner of the game show Survivor. You ever, you ever watched Survivor? I did. I was on a Survivor run for a while. I've lost interest over the last <laughs> decade, probably. <laughs> but crazy but, how long that thing's been going. I, I, when it was on early on, I was all about it for a while there. And then I just ran out of steam. But uh, I, I certainly, did you ever watch it other than Richard Hatch? No, not no. at all. I mean, I mean, the first season and then I, I lost interest much quicker. Yeah, uh, I think I lasted six seasons and then I was like, all right, already. Enough of all this. Congratulations, man. You got yourself all set up with Devil Wears Prada tickets as well as Snowmobile Show tickets. Hang on one second. We will hook you up with everything you need to know. There's your pop culture smackdown. It is the X Rock. They got a new album out today. That is Linkin Park. That is Breaking the Habit here on The Morning After with Nick and Big J. Always something going on at the lounge at the end of the universe. We love to talk about it on Friday mornings. And it's an honor to welcome back into the studio Coral from Lounge at the End of the Universe. Hi, Coral. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate you getting up early and doing all this fun. And it's a pretty big uh, happening this weekend over there at the Lounge, huh? Oh, yeah. We've got a great show uh, this Saturday. So tomorrow we've got the Hard Bodies Mail Review Show. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> I, I hope you so. Yeah. And uh, we were just talking about how, like, involved behind the scenes this time uh, the Lounge at the End of the Universe is. It truly is like a, a homegrown kind of show that uh, Jan and everybody have kind of taken under their wing and trying to make a really, really big deal out of, right? Yeah. Uh, Kenny had an opportunity to take over the show, and he came to us, and he was like, hey, if I do this, can I still have a home to perform in? We're like, of course. Uh, we always want to support you guys. We want to make sure that you grow. If you grow, we grow. Um, and it, it gives us an excuse to, you know, stretch our creative legs yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's new dancers. There's new performances. There's new, like, everything. So Jen has been putting her heart and soul into this. Uh, and we can't for forget B. Williams. She's been doing all of the costuming and, like, dance routines and so many different things. Like, it's going to be yeah. A really good show. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was homegrown. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, it, you know, you've got two burlesque royalty, like, performers coaching these guys. Yeah. So it's not going to be your regular, like, male strip show where it's going to be the same routines <laughs> and everybody's just kind of, like, getting in your face. Right. Uh, you know, there's going to be actual art and performance to this, which is really nice. Yeah, another yeah. layer to it, which is really, really exciting. And that's happening this evening? Uh, no, that's going to be tomorrow okay. night. Doors are at 7. The show starts at 8. And Beautiful. then I believe there's an after. Party of with course, the what? Of yeah. course, there is. Listen, <laughs> when, you, you, when they decide that they want to do soft bodies, we're available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and don't know how that clothed, one would sell. Fully but... clothed and soft bodies, I'll you know volunteer. But Big J's a great dancer. In case you you need to know, uh, he can get the job done. I for believe sure. it. He, he looks like he's got some moves. Plus, he's a dad, right? They're, they're so you got yeah, like, they're dad moves. Yeah, for sure. Dads have the best moves. <laughs> but of course, that's happening tomorrow night. If you're looking for a, a really Really good time uh, this weekend here in the Treasure Valley. And then as we look forward on the calendar at the lounge, there's a lot of great comedy shows that are coming up as well, right? So many amazing comedy shows. So we like just to touch base quickly, we've got Heath Harmison and Austin Bon Johnson performing next weekend, the 22nd and 23rd. Heath is so great. Oh, I know. He's so good. Uh, and, you know, he's so funny. He's fr funny for the whole family, too. So, like, you know, I, I think it's an all ages show, but he may have some more adult content in there. So probably like 18 and up. Yeah, use your yeah. discretion. Yeah, use your discretion. Maybe go check out his stuff on YouTube and Facebook and see if you like him. 
Um, and then we have an all Spanish show coming up as well on next that's Friday. Right. It's uh, Angelo Colino. So that's going to be entirely in Spanish. So if you don't understand Spanish, that's not a show for you. Yeah, me too. Uh, or it is. <laughs> or that's how you learn. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tough to learn okay, it that you're way, right. but yeah, you, you can at least pretend you understand it. Yeah. My my favorite way to learn is just put Disney shows on <laughs> in Spanish. Right? Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it does make sense. Yeah, that CC comes in handy for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have so much improv through the holidays because it, you know, it's it's a time to be creative mm-hmm. and you know, community as well. So you know, you get to be a part of the show. Uh, we've got a drinking game. Uh oh! So you get to make your own rules, <laughs> and then you drink along with the crew, um, and it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're probably gonna have, I believe, uh, that one is sponsored by Bev Seltz or uh, Seltzy now, okay. um, and they uh, they've got amazing cocktails. They're made out of Garden City. They use sugar beets as their uh, alcohol base, which is really cool. Um, and so they have like all natural cocktails and whatnot that are are on available. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we have a Thanksgiving show right after Thanksgiving. Um, so that's going to be a family show as well. There's going to be two chances to catch that. There's a 7 and 9.30 show. Last year, they did some reenactments, and oh my God, I almost wet myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're really funny. The Upper guys are fantastic. Yeah. They've been here before, and, and they, they do these themed kind of like improv shows that go really really well they lean into it and have a lot of fun with them they got a great team over there for yeah sure. they they really do uh daniel over there and uh and all of those guys have have really uh stepped up the game of, of improv comedy just not only in the treasure valley but the pacific northwest uh it's really hard to find like good comedy and they do a good mixture of short and long form as yeah. well so you can kind of dip your toes in so even if long form's not for you there's still a bit of the show for you know for short form yeah, and, yeah. and having fun. So, and they usually have like goodies to give away and whatnot if you participate. So, it's a fun show. It really, really is. So, if you want more information on any of the shows that Coral talked about, or you want to grab tickets, more importantly, specifically for Hard Bodies uh, uh, tomorrow night or anything coming up in the future, maybe even a Cosmic Comedy Pass that will get you into several shows throughout the calendar year, you might want to check out loungeboise.com. That's where you can get all the information on these shows and grab your tickets online. You can also always get them at the door too, but it's nice to purchase in advance to make sure you have everything that you need. And Coral, I know you're in charge of uh, the beverage service there and you take care of all that stuff. Is there anything new or cool for the season that you would recommend or want to check out at Lounge that Ooh, you guys have? We have a really good pecan pie porter on okay. right now. All right. It's a lot pecan of peas. Pie. But yeah. <laughs> the alliteration is fun. Triple P, baby. Uh, and uh, I I'm telling you, Coral has a wonderful palette for this stuff. Uh, a lot of the stuff that she has had, I haven't been able to find anywhere else, and you have introduced me to a lot of beverages, so I give you all the credit in the world for that. You're very talented. And so check out The Lounge for a great holiday beverage and then some fantastic shows, loungeboise.com, as you can grab the tickets for that. Thank you for coming in, Coral. It's always good to see you. Thank yeah, you for thanks. having me. Yeah. Morning After with Nick and Big J. It's the x Rocks. <laughs> it's Dorothy. That is Mud here on The Morning After with Nick and Big J. And it's always fun when we can have a surprise prize visit from one of our favorite people, two of our favorite people in the yeah. entire world, as they have come into the two studio. Two people who are now having sex because of you. Darcy, how uncomfortable does that make you feel every time he says that? So uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but Craig Gass is in studio He's and Darcy used Nutt. To it, so, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, of course, uh, longtime friends of the show. And uh, Craig, this is like a, an unanticipated appearance in the Boise area? Yes, I... Uh, was waiting for a work visa to get approved in Australia. I was in New Zealand a few days ago, and the work visa didn't get approved, and I had a few days that I could either spend money on hotels or fly to Boise and spend time with Darcy, and I flew around the world to hang out with Darcy. Aww. So romantic. You know, I mean, yeah. really, he knocks it out of the park. You're making us look bad, Craig, for crying <laughs> yeah. out loud. I mean, you know, I, I also... Uh, uh, what do I... I don't know. Do I have any toxic... <laughs> I try to be toxic. Every time every time we see a documentary, I, I try to about like bad toxic dudes. Yes. I always love to be like Do you want me to be happy? You should give me money. Like link up your account. My God. Oh, you're trying to catfish at this point when you're already in the relationship? Yeah, yeah I'm already in it and yeah. I try so to backwards. like Yeah, and, and uh, I'll I'll try to take on toxic. <laughs> it's fun to be toxic, I think. I think it's fun to be uh like bad and uh apparently I'm not good at it, but 
Well, I think that's too uh, a positive trait, Craig. But uh, thank you for coming in. We we always do appreciate it because uh, you are gallivanting all over the world, doing a whole bunch of shows. And even though you weren't able to go, Australia is next on the list, right? Yeah, we're leaving tomorrow. We're yeah. going to go to Australia tomorrow. We'll be there for the week, and I have uh, a show at the Comedy Store in Sydney, which I can't get paid for now. And <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a mess. But uh, but I wanted to come back here, and it was a great opportunity for two things to come in and say thank you for you guys have cool contests all the time you gave me a girlfriend like that's the <laughs> coolest contest ever i was caller number it wasn't a contest <laughs> don't say oh, that it wasn't that's, that's i thought you gave true. her away no 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 <laughs> but i but in all seriousness i met darcy here at the station uh three a little over three years ago god has it been that long yeah yeah, yeah wow. i get congratulations I guys the not only show with you guys yeah not only has it been uh three years and in, in a month since we met here I am performing. Uh, I've done shows here at, at when the Funny Bone was here. I've done shows at um, what's the name of the the mystery theater? Watson's. 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 I've done shows at, of course, Lounge at the End of the Universe, which I love. And for the first time on January 11th, which is the three year anniversary of our first date. Oh, okay. Ooh. I am performing. At the Egyptian Theater. Nice, man. Congratulations, That's dude. awesome. Well deserved. Yeah, tickets just went on sale this morning uh, at the Egyptian Theater website. You can also go to getgas.com. Get gas uh, with two S's.com. And um, do you want to be a part of the show, Darcy? Do you? <laughs> the one on January 11th? Yeah, do you want to go on stage and... <laughs> and, and do what, babe? Vent. You could vent. Or... You could rehash your first date. Where was the first date? On Do you remember? I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there were very... It's, I mean, we just said he's romantic, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you really want to get into... We kind of rushed along on January 11th. It was 11th. Denny's. I'm not even kidding. Oh, right. yeah, we hey. did. We went to Denny's. All right. We went what to were Denny's. What you thinking of, Craig? <laughs> It was. Why I was thinking of what us? happened before we got to Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> but before we got to Denny's, I'm thinking modern of what, day dating. Yeah, yeah. yeah I uh, we, before we got to Denny's, it, it got intense. And um, wow. And then at the Denny's, I told her that uh, I, I might be having uh, a medical issue, and uh, and where I, the nearest hospital was in where, case I needed to drive him there. Yeah. Really? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I never thought of myself as a hypochondriac, uh-huh. but I'm starting to realize more and more through Darcy <laughs> that I, I do kind of take it to the nth degree. Do you guys, um, do you, when you something's wrong, do you Google it and go to the worst case scenario? No. I, I am no. I am a germaphobe hypochondriac myself, so I oh. everything is going to kill me or I am about to die. I am 100% on board with that, yes. Okay. That is me. Because I, uh, true story, self-diagnosed myself as having colon cancer. Okay. And, and uh, it, it was after watching a really intense episode of 60 Minutes, and they did a whole story about colon cancer and about uh, how apparently at that time, by the way, this happened in my 20s okay. when I self-diagnosed myself, but I did have a weird medical issue that I was afraid to talk to anybody about. And I watched 60 Minutes, and they were talking about colon cancer, and they said, here's the three main symptoms, and I had one of them. And I was like, oh, my God, that's it. I'm dying. And um, and the girl I was living with at the time were no longer together, obviously, because sure. of this. Yeah, yeah it wasn't and, me. <laughs> and, I, and I told her, uh, hey, I need to talk to you. Uh, and she said, what's wrong? And I said, I'm dying of colon cancer. And she started crying, <laughs> which, you know, I loved her. So uh, So I started crying, and I was like, <laughs> my ass is dead <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, and and she said well what did the doctor say I said I haven't even seen a doctor and she goes well, what do you mean you have said that how do you know you have colon cancer and I said I was, I was watching 60 Minutes and she gave me the most judgmental look I've ever seen <laughs> yeah rightfully so in my life and, I'm on her side <laughs> yeah and she convinced me to go see a doctor and I, I there was one available on a Monday and uh, the doctor walked in. He said, Craig Gass? And I said, yes. And he said, what brings you in here today? And I said, well, unfortunately, it's uh, I'm afraid to say it's bad news. I have colon cancer. <laughs> and, and he said, "You, how old are you? And I said, 25. <laughs> and he goes, what makes you think you have colon cancer? And I said, 
I'm sure you probably watched 60 Minutes. <laughs> and he said, why are you 25 and watching 60 Minutes? Yeah. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, something that no guy ever, I wasn't prepared for. He said, all right, take off your pants. Mm-hmm. And get on the table, and we'll take a look. And I went, whoa. Like, I, I didn't even think. I was like, just give me colon cancer pills. I just want to go home. Don't, right. don't, yeah, don't yeah. touch me. He touched me. He touched me. He he touched me so hard. Uh-huh. He actually forced two words out of my mouth. I didn't even know that I had any words that wanted to come out, but he finger popped me so hard that I went, oh, my. I actually said, oh, my. And... And this guy behind me, he goes, oh, my, indeed. And I was like, oh, come on. Like, you know, there was a nurse in the room. She started laughing. Anyways. Clean bill of health, though, right? Hemorrhoids. No, that's all us. <laughs> hemorrhoids. All right. no. Hemorrhoids. Good that's all us. Yeah. Guess who has hemorrhoids? Good to know. And you know what? Uh, not, I mean, he said, just eat an apple a day. You'll be fine. Like, you just need more fiber. You're going to be fine. And so, like, the issue... Yeah, so what a anyways, doctor thing to say. Yeah, man, hemorrhoids. Egyptian theater. Yeah. January eleventh. <laughs> Listen, what am I doing? Why do you bring that story <laughs> back? January eleventh. I mean. But here's the thing. So the Egyptian theater yeah. is the first date on a massive world tour for me. I'm gonna start in Boise on January eleventh at the Egyptian Theater. I have uh two comedy specials coming out in the next couple months. Awesome. One first one's coming right before Christmas. Believe it or not, it's a comedy special where I, for the entire show. I'm just making fun of Kiss for an hour. <laughs> That's the whole show. Love it. That's the whole comedy Love show. It. And Love then it. the second comedy special is more of a traditional comedy special. It's about my mom. And then I have two podcasts that I'm coming out with. The first one is, is going to start in the next two or three weeks with me and Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. That's great. Chris Kale and you've I. you've been mentoring him, right? You've doing stand-up. Mentoring? Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, dude, He Chris Kale is so into stand-up. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I shouldn't. The, the Five Finger Death Punch is going to be part of a massive. I, I think I can say stadium tour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're going to be part of. A, they're doing a stadium tour in 2025. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that, but <laughs> but in between dates on the stadium tour, he wants to do some comedy shows with me in between in some of those cities that they're okay. going to be performing. I'm in. in, man. Yeah, dude. Chris Kale. That's is, awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just he's. Uh, he's been such a comedy nerd for so long that he's always asking me like, "Hey, do you know?" Pert Greischer, do you know Tom Segura? Do you know Tony Hinchcliffe? You know, I, I want to go see them. And, and I'm always texting my friends and going, hey, I'm going to uh, send, a, is it okay to bring send a musician to your show? His name's Chris Kale. He's in a band called Five Finger Death Punch. Really scary looking, but he's a sweetheart. I always yeah. send the same thing to everybody. He's really scary looking, but he's a sweetheart. And everybody loves him. Everybody in comedy loves him. And so um, Chris Kale and I are starting to... Uh, Beardo and Weirdo nice. podcast. Nice. Uh, awesome. We have a home at Loudwire, okay. which has 2 million YouTube subscribers. So, um, And then I'm doing a podcast called I Swear This Is True. And that's just all my crazy stories. Uh, not just my crazy stories, you know, living at Eddie Van Halen's yeah. house, um, uh, being able to open for Metallica. Um, God, I haven't seen you guys since I opened for Pantera. No, no, what? yes. When you came out on stage and you went viral for that, right? Crazy. Yeah. People yeah. hated me. Yeah. They yeah. hated yeah. me. Yeah. Dude, I go and I get this gig. There's a guy in Pantera that uh, for years has always been super nice to me and has been saying, dude, you got to come to a show. You got to come to a show. And I finally linked up in Minnesota. And I said, hey, dude, uh, I'm going to be in Minnesota. And I'm assuming you'll be in town on Thursday. You want to hang out on Thursday before your show? And he said, I can't, man. Looks like we might be doing a, a, a special show. Yeah, it was like in a really small club, right? Like a little team First time. Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Prince filmed Purple Rain. Yeah. And yeah. they did a, a, a surprise show. They didn't call it Pantera. They said special show with a band called Cowboys from Hell. Dude, I mean, come on. It's yeah. so on the nose. <laughs> and uh, and so my first thought is like, oh, my God. Yeah, dude. Well, let's. Uh, and then I hung up the phone. And I was like, God, I hope I, hope I can get a ticket. And then all of a sudden I went, wait a minute. And I texted him and said, um, do you need an opener? <laughs> and he called me and he said, what are you thinking? And I said, uh, well, this is how I opened for Metallica. I walked out on stage and I said, good evening. My name's Craig Gass. I am Metallica's tour manager. And, and he goes, 
Oh, dude, I love it. I love it. And he wouldn't even let me finish the rest of the thing. He goes, all right, uh, I'm going to call my manager, and then we're going to go, you know, and then we'll get you all looped in. And so it was a done deal, and I got to perform at First Avenue and open for Pantera. I walked out on stage, and part of my announcements that I've developed over the years, because I've, I've gone on to open for System of a Down, I've gone on to open for The Struts, mm -hmm. Corey Taylor, and it's turned into this whole thing where I go, like, hey, we have some very important announcements, and one of them is, you may have heard some rumors, and it's true. We're recording our first ever live album, yeah. right? <sighs> <sighs> so I need your attention. There's a proper way to yell on a live album. What I didn't anticipate is that we're in such a modern world of social media that all these heavy metal websites went bananas. Instantly. It was like Pantera yeah. recording a live album in Minnesota. Yes. Instantly. Yeah. And in some of the headlines, it was employee... <laughs> For Pantera, <laughs> says they're recording a live album. So all this hatred uh, went towards this employee, uh -huh. which was me. Yeah, I'm totally anonymous. I'm just an employee for Pantera. <laughs> and all these people are like, screw that employee, man. What a jerk, blah, blah, blah. And because I was anonymous, I started commenting on all the threads going, yeah, I hate that guy. What a dick. And and I start, and I would, I would, I would hate on myself and then quote my material and go, yeah, why did he even bring up the size of Zach Wilde's genitalia? What did that have to do with anything? And it, all these like metal websites started doing stories about that employee for Pantera. And then Pantera put out a statement yeah. and said, no, we're not recording a live album. That was a joke uh, from our comedian buddy, <laughs> Craig Gass. And they tagged me in everything. There and I went, oh, and then the, the whole audience came to me. Oh, dude, uh, it was amazing. It I was, was. I, was t I was calling Darcy every day. She's like, the way she's looking at me right now is the way she was looking at me back then. She's like, why are you doing that? I go, it's so much fun. I remember, remember we had the discussion where I was like, oh my God, all these people hate me. And you go, is that good? And I go, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I was like, I remember Darcy being like, but why is that good? I go, because everyone's talking about how much they hate me like this is funny <laughs> like it's stupid nothing i said was true and everyone's getting mad at me this is awesome and she goes well don't you want to take credit and i said no <laughs> i go let them be remember we had like it was like a couple yeah. days and, and yeah the way she's looking at me right now anyways <laughs> the point of this is dreams really do come true here at the x you guys gave me a girlfriend <laughs> and someone that i could talk to every day you're and, welcome Craig. and um like, how often do you give away women here? Is this like a trafficking thing? <laughs> Almost never. No, don't say that, Craig. <laughs> don't say that. We don't need to go viral no, for that. No, no. Yeah. Thank you. He I may be good at making people go viral. Like this. <laughs> Craig Gass joins us in studio. Darcy Nunn is here as well. Craig's going to be at the Egyptian Theater on January 11th. Grab your tickets now at getgas.com. Come back for another segment. Is yes, cool? absolutely. Right. Or go to the Egyptian website. Do that uh, too. Yeah, but the tickets are on sale now. Reserve seating on sale right now. Egyptian Theater, January 11th. It's our three-year anniversary that day. Uh, do we say the letters or no? No. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Not gonna say the letters. Yeah, because it's an anniversary of of letters <laughs> coming in. All right. Yeah, coming together. We will. Uh, we'll have more with Craig and Darcy next on the X Rock. She hates what? It. <laughs> Theory of a Dead Man RX here on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Our friend Craig Gass, comedian, is going to be in town at the Egyptian Theater on January 11th. Tickets go on sale this morning. Grab them at getgas.com or the Egyptian Theater website. Darcy Nutt also in studio from Chalice Tattoo. Hey. Always good to see you guys. Uh, Craig, you talked recently about uh, the two podcasts you have coming out. This has been a thing for a while. No offense, but what took so long? Why so yeah. long before you jumped on the podcast, Wag? Um, it's, it always got pitched, um, and there were some weird experiences along the way with some, uh, podcast companies and Chris got really, in fact, it was at a lunch with me, Darcy and Chris, where Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch said, um, yeah, man, we should do a, a, a podcast, blah, blah. And I was like, what, you want to do a podcast with me? You mean, he goes, dude, I've been trying to tell you that. Remember you got all upset <laughs> about it? And I was like, oh, all right. And then I remember when we left, Darcy was like, I think that would be Darcy's input <laughs> on everything is so funny. Uh, I'm about to tell you something that's going to sound absolutely bizarre, and it's 100% true. Uh, Darcy, this isn't the bizarre part. Uh, <laughs> Darcy is a massive Scorpions fan. So early on in our relationship, knowing that she was a massive Scorpions fan, I wanted to surprise her and bring her to Vegas where I live and 
bring her to a Scorpions concert because friends of mine were opening for the Scorpions. So she was like, oh, my God, she was so excited. And then we ended up hanging out in the dressing room of my friends who were opening the show. In the dressing room was randomly Carrie King. Well, it wasn't random because Carrie was living in Vegas at the time. Okay. So Carrie King from Slayer is there. And I go, babe, this is uh, Carrie. He plays for Slayer. Carrie, this is my girlfriend. This is Darcy Nutt. And Carrie's like, Ugh. <laughs> and then uh, and we're talking and and Carrie uh, Carrie goes yeah we're moving to New York and I go oh dude I'm in New York once a month and he goes you are you should call me man you should call me dude and I I go yeah oh yeah man what and I it was to me felt like one of those kind of conversations that we all have yeah with people radio whatever like hey we should you know blah 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 Play and I nice. go absolutely we leave the Scorpions concert and Darcy goes. I think that guy from Slayer really liked you. <laughs> and I go, oh, yeah, man, he's he's always been really nice to me. And she goes, no, the look in his face when he said you should call me. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? He's always been nice to me. And she goes, no, you should call him because he asked you several times to call him. And there was a look in his face. And I go, babe, he's in Slayer. Like, I don't think he misses anybody. And because Darcy really was like, no, I really think that he likes you and you should. It was a bizarre conversation. He wants to be your friend. That's yeah. what she said. Yeah. She goes Just like that, too, I bet. She goes, the guy from Slayer wants to be your friend. And I go, all right, I'll text him. So I text him and I go, I go, hey, buddy, uh, New York this weekend. You want to come hang out? And I called Darcy and I was like, babe, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> She goes, what? I go, so the guy from Slayer is not going to be in town this week. And then she goes, okay. And I go, I'm going to send you a screenshot of what he sent me back. He sent me back sad emoji faces. And I went, what? The guy Carrie from King. Slayer. He uses a sent- lot of emojis. Dude, I get, I get emojis from some of the angriest uh. band members on planet Earth. And I think I bring out a soft side of people. I think. I don't know. You're That's, easy to talk to, Craig. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you're a good friend. Yeah. You're a good friend. That's why. I think there's something that, uh, I, it's just, it's a neat thing to see, but, uh, cause I'm not angry about anything. A lot of my friends are very angry. <laughs> I've never, like, this is a weird conversation to have on the air, but I'm not an angry person. <laughs> like, I am, I'm Fozzie the Bear, dude. I'm, I'm Waka Waka. 24-7. I'm Fozzie the Bear. It's 20, true. Yeah. 24-7. I'm I'm an easygoing dude. And and no matter what the circumstances are, I'm quick to accept a tough thing and just be like, well, that sucks, but all right, cool. What whatever. I'm not I don't like not getting paid for a gig in Australia. <laughs> God, God damn, damn it. it. Go rose right over you. God God damn it. You don't yeah. even care. You're like, but, I'm going to Australia with my lady. Yeah, yeah. So well, we're leaving for Australia tomorrow. But dude, uh Australia and New Zealand and a whole bunch of international dates are gonna be happening in 2025. But I'm really excited that I'm kicking off this tour. It's a massive year-long tour that I'm starting in 2025, and it's gonna start right here in Boise, Egyptian Theater. You can go to the Egyptian, uh, and it's all reserved seating, so get good seats now at the Egyptian Theater. And um, if you're a fan of any of the shows I've been on, uh, King of Queens, Sex and the City, Family Guy, all that stuff, or the roast that we mm-hmm. did of uh, uh, Gene Simmons and Corey Taylor, and um, uh, it's, it's going to be a fun show. And by the time we get to the show, that the episodes of this new podcast I'm doing with Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch will be in heavy rotation at Loudwire. Good. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. But yeah, it's weird. Angry guys are super nice to me. That's and, great. Uh, yeah, I, and I like uh, walking with Chris Kale because he's super intimidating looking. <laughs> so because uh, there, there's some comedy clubs we go to that are in bad neighborhoods, and he'll walk me to my car. I shouldn't say that. But he'll, <laughs> he'll walk me to my car. <laughs> I'm coming off as a giant puss in this conversation, right? He's I'm a puss. He's very protective of you. It's he okay. Is. He is. He's very protective, and and I love him for that. He's a good dude, and um, not at all what you expect from a dude in Five Finger Death Punch. Like, dude, that guy, and he gets offended when I bring this up because he thinks I'm saying something else. That I'm. He reads three books a week, mm-hmm. Chris Kale, and I'm like, wow, dude, that's. That's crazy coming from you. And he's like, oh, because I'm from Kentucky? And I'm like, no, because you're a rock star. <laughs> Not because you're like, oh, because I'm from Kentucky, I'm stupid. No, it has nothing to do with you coming from Kentucky. People who are in famous rock bands don't have a need to read. 
no, books. Chris is a, an amazing guy. Yeah. Like uh, we. We ran into him for the first time uh, when he first got the gig when he was just bartending in Kentucky when he was announced as the the uh, the basis for Five Finger Death Punch and then the first gig or one of the first gigs was at the time Rock on the Range where we ran into you out there remember on the comedy tent we interviewed him and then we ran into him at the airport remember that yeah. we had a whole yeah. other conversation with him at the airport and he's just so kind and humble and really really awesome and we've always been a fan of that guy just as a dude because right out the gate he was in this amazing band but just the nicest down to earth humble guy you could ever meet. Do you know his story about what happened at his bartending gig with the guy he replaced? In was Five Finger was that at the Hard Rock? It was at the Hard Rock yeah. in Las Vegas. Uh, Chris Kale was bartending at the Hard Rock. By the way, uh, and I'll say this because he says this publicly, Chris Kale was making more money as a bartender in <laughs> Las Vegas than he was in his first year in Five Finger Death Punch. Right. But that's more of a statement about how much money there is in bartending in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. And as a bartender, he sees the guy from Five Finger Death Punch come into his into his uh, bar area, and he uh, and he he makes a joke that he tells one of the waitresses, "Hey, uh, tell that guy uh, this is the big boy beard area because he had a bigger beard than uh-huh. that guy." And he says, "So tell," and like as a playful joke, sure, like offered to buy the guy a drink. Hey, let him know this is the big boy beard area, and the waitress comes back and goes. Um, he said uh, he's a rock star and you're a bartender. <laughs> and like some really crappy yeah. line about that. And he was like, wow, that was kind of unnecessary. And then a year later when he heard that they had just fired that bass player, he was like, I want his gig. And he got it. Yeah, he actually got the gig crazy. of a guy. Crazy. That's like a karate crazy. kid movie <laughs> like scene, right? Yeah. Like the bully, yeah. the jerk says mean things about you, and then you take his job. That's yeah. incredible. Like, yeah, but yeah, he's he's amazing, man. And um, uh, the storytelling podcast, the uh, I, I swear this is true, is just the stories about living with Eddie Van Halen and uh, stories like we just talked about opening for Pantera recently and, and just these bizarre moments that I've been in the middle of. In my life, um, uh, getting invited to mission control at NASA, just like weird stuff. Mm-hmm. But what makes it different than someone who has other comedians who have incredible stories is I'm getting all the witnesses who were there. Oh, nice. Uh, people who were actually there when I lived at Eddie Van Halen's house. There were people I was at the time. I didn't realize some of these people I'm still friends with. The guy who's the current drummer of Aerosmith. Uh, was, I guess, in the studio a lot back then because he was teching for Alex Van Halen at the okay. time. So he's mentioned to me like, yeah, remember when we used to hang out at Eddie Van Halen's house? And I'm like, <laughs> when were you there? And he's like, I was Alex's drum tech. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize. But yeah, so just weird, weird stories. I'm kind of rambling. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, we, we want you it. to be on the lookout for the podcast for sure. We want you to go to the show on January 11th at the Egyptian Theater. So grab your tickets. You want to hang out for one more segment? Please. Let's I would love it. to. Okay. Let, Darcy, we'll talk about Darcy guys. in the next segment. Love it. We'll learn all about it. That's next. We're going to make X. out. <laughs> That's Scott Staff. That is Black Butterfly here on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Always nice when we can have a Friday and a very special edition when our friend comedian Craig Gass comes into the studio to talk about a big show he's playing at the Egyptian Theater. Brings in his girlfriend, Darcy Nutt, who, of course, from Chalice Tattoo, also uh, been a part of the show's history. And uh, we're happy to be part of your story. So thank you guys for coming in anytime you can. You're always welcome. It's an open door policy for sure. For those of you you. who missed it. Sorry, I stepped on that. (laughs) Uh, For those of you who missed it, Darcy and I met here at this radio station with you guys uh, three years ago. A little over three years ago. It was uh, late September of, what was it, 2021? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then the show I'm doing at the Egyptian is on January 11th. It's the three-year anniversary of our first date. January 11th, Egyptian Theater. Should we have sex on stage? No. No? Okay. I'm just throwing it out there. Craig, you can do that a lot of places. I'm 100% sure Boise is one of those places where you could not do that. Oh, dude. I saw one of those shows in uh, Amsterdam. Dude, I uh, uh, no, no, not like. So sorry. sorry, that was I'm a so weird sorry, turn. Darcy. That was a weird turn. I'm sorry. And then I, I reach out to like, like pat her shoulder, and I just touched her boob. Um, all right, it's getting I worse. Can't take him anywhere. <laughs> if you're watching the video of this, it's pretty awesome. It, like real, this is like some Showtime, like after 11 o'clock stuff that you just red shoe diaries happening right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I, I did a show in Amsterdam a few years ago at a great. English-speaking comedy club in Amsterdam called 
Boom Chicago. I don't know why they call it that. And the owner of the club said to all the comedians, hey, just so you know, if this is something you want to do, this is a tourist attraction here in Amsterdam. We have live sex shows. And our club happens to have a great relationship with the number one live sex show in Amsterdam. If you guys would like to attend that, they rank them. And and they, <laughs> they rank them. Okay. Crazy. There, there's some guy out there <laughs> ranking them. And uh, and they said, so if you want to go, uh, we can put you on the guest list. And most of us were like, yeah, I mean, dude, that's that's crazy. So they put all of our names on the guest list. And when the show wrapped up, I hung out with the audience and whatever, merch and whatever. And then finally, I start working my way through the red light district to go to that live sex show. Mm-hmm. And um, by the way, red light district, like I'm I'm sober. And God willing, if I make it to December 14th, I will be sober for 20 years. Good for you, man. So, Congratulations. And, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, drugs turns out are bad yeah and um <laughs> i had a heart attack so i had to it's a long story anyways so walking through the red light district dude there's a ben and jerry's right in the middle of the red light district <laughs> and uh they make their own waffle cones there <laughs> okay so when you walk by you smell fresh <laughs> waffle cones being made at the ben and jerry's and i was like oh my god and i i walked in and i have this move where I, when I go to ice cream places where I pretend I have a girlfriend. I mean, now I have a girlfriend, but <laughs> but back yeah. then I would pretend I have a girlfriend and they they go, uh, yes, uh, can I help you? Um, yeah, can I get uh, two scoops of uh, chocolate chip cookie dough? And um, and I'll look around and I'll go, where is she? Can, she likes, can you put rainbow sprinkles on it for her? <laughs> she loves, she loves rainbow sprinkles. Can you put more? She likes a lot of rainbow sprinkles. Yeah, just put more. Yeah, she. I don't even know where she is, but yeah, just put it on, and then I'll commit all the way to the exit. Yeah. Like I'll I'll get to the door and I'll go, honey. Like I'll open the door, honey. And then once I get past the Ben and Jerry's, I'll just start looking. I start looking my little cone, and then I make it to the live sex show, which is a block away. And I said, hey, my name's Craig Gass. I'm on the guest list. And they go, yep, come on in. And I and I walk in, and dude. People straight up having sex on stage, straight up, right in front of you. Um, the room is filled with sm- people are smoking weed. Uh-huh. I saw people doing coke. Okay, and they're just like sex is happening. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> and I'm watching with my ice cream cone and like <laughs> licking my cone. Jeez. And then I started to notice people in the room slowly like. <laughs> pointing and staring at me like everyone's like smoking weed and doing coke and, and like i'm in the middle of this crowd licking an ice cream cone with rainbow sprinkles and like who brought the freak in here that's who's awesome. the weirdo the weirdo yeah. i am the weirdo that's my guy Beardo and sense. weirdo the new podcast with me and chris kale from five finger death punch and it all leads up to the launch of the greatest, most busy year of my life in 2025, starting right here in Boise at the Egyptian Theater. I start my tour on January 11th at the Egyptian Theater, and the tickets are at the Egyptian Theater website, or you can go to my page, getgas.com. I couldn't be more excited to do a show at the Egyptian Theater because now, having been dating Darcy for the last three years and coming here and seeing some amazing shows, Steve-O actually let me open for him yeah. at the Egyptian Theater. Uh, two years ago, mm-hmm. and um, other friends of mine have come into town. Jim Norton was there recently, did a great show at the Egyptian. So, man, I am so stoked to be that that theater has so much history. So, spending time here in Boise and, and being able to say that I'm going to get to perform at the Egyptian Theater is a big deal. It's so, awesome. Grab your tickets. Very... They're on sale as of this morning. Uh, you can get them at the Egyptian Theater website, getgas.com. We also want people to follow you on social media. Craig, what's the best place to do that? Craig Gas Comedy, uh, two S's, at Craig Gas Comedy. And um, if you follow now, you're going to see some pretty crazy videos. I'm introducing, this is cra- This is awful name dropping, but uh, we're going mm-hmm. to hang out with a friend of mine who plays guitar for Pearl Jam while we're in Australia. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be some amazing Pearl Jam videos. If you're a fan of Pearl Jam. Again, will you do us a favor? Yes. Ask him. Just, you know, maybe come to Boise. Go, Mike, we know you live in Montana, <laughs> oh. but how about For a Boise date? It's been since 2007. 2001. No, no, no. 2001. My God, yes, we need a, we need a Boise date. We do. So put the screws to him. Okay. Right? 
Get it's Jeff that has a place in Montana. Is it Jeff? Yeah, Mike has a place in Seattle, Seattle. and Huntington Beach. I'll give you the address. Okay. You <laughs> yeah, um, we'll send him letters. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's Jeff that has a place in Montana. I I will put in a word for you. And um, but yeah, if you're a fan, at Craig Gas Comedy, and also there's weird stuff on there on that Instagram page. But um, I can't. I'm just really excited. By the way, and here's what I've learned about Boise in, in terms of my favorite places to eat. <laughs> okay. Craigslist. Yes. Is, is this is that weird? <laughs> no. Okay. Go, fire okay. away. So, um, one of the first nights we all hung out together, like we all hung out at a Slipknot show. Uh huh. At uh, was that uh, Fort Idaho Center? Fort Idaho yeah. Center. Yep. They had food trucks outside, mm-hmm. and one of them was called Pizza Coned. Yeah. Coned. It's coned. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude. That place, so weird and so awesome. You do love that place. You've told us that you like Cone <laughs> yeah. several like times. Uh, Grimaldi's. Yeah. And Meridian. Mm-hmm. Best pizza, period. Okay. Uh, in my opinion. Am I sounding too arrogant about that? Is that no. weird to say? Yeah, it's an opinion. You're allowed okay, to it's an opinion. What people don't know is that you're a pizza connoisseur. Mm-hmm. I am, dude. And so. here's the thing about Grimaldi's. Um, the history, I'm from New York. There are two kids who in the late 1800s were working at the first ever pizza place in New York called Lombardi's. This is history nobody needs to know, but I'm telling you this history. There were two kids who worked at the first ever pizza place in New York called Lombardi's who opened their own pizza places. One was a guy named John Sasso who has his own pizza place. Well, I mean, he's been long dead, uh, but John John's Pizzeria on Bleecker okay. is the best pizza place in America. Um and then uh, Anthony Grimaldi opened up his pizza place, and that became a chain. And I couldn't believe they had a Grimaldi's here in Meridian. So Grimaldi's in Meridian yeah. is the best. I mean, they have a coal oven, mm-hmm. which adds to the flavor of the pizza. Um, and then uh, there's the breakfast burrito place that I like that's around the Perea. Corner. Yep. Korea is good. Oh yeah, very good. What would you guys say is also? Am, am I, am I, is that a weird thing to put you on the spot? Because no, here, here's what I'll say. Every time we hang out, Craig, you're yeah. always taking us to the original pancake. House. Yeah, that's you're where we like always that? go. Those are the best omelets I've ever had in my life. <laughs> we always go to the original pancake house, right down the street. Yeah, dude, those omelets. I would have sex with that omelet. That Excuse is like, me. That is, dude. They are so fluffy. They are so light. We go to them all across the country. I believe guys. it. I believe yeah. it. Obsessed. There's original pancake houses around the country, and I found them. And um, But yeah, dude, original pancake house. Shout out to the egg white omelet. I'm going to throw another idea at you, because, yeah. you, you know, along with your new podcasts and all that stuff, you should have your own food finder app. You know what's weird is I did a, uh, I was asked, a friend of mine started a food podcast, and I said, well, I don't know much about food. So, but we'll, we'll do it. And he said, well, I just want to know what your top five favorite, like if you were on death row, what would be your top five restaurants you'd want to eat at before you died? And I was like, oh, and I had a list from around the country (laughs) of five different places that I would want to eat at before I. Yeah, let's get you on the food network. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Yeah. I am a weird eater though. 90% of it would be pizza, you guys. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But. (laughs) Well, it's good. Doesn't Darcy have the sweetest voice you've ever heard? (laughs) Yeah, we asked yeah. her to be a co-host on this show once, if you remember. That's Craig. right. That's how I met her, was here in the station. It wasn't a contest. <laughs> That's right. It was not a contest. Well, because I thought that I won. I thought I was caller eight, and I got to take her home. <laughs> By the way, uh, when I met her here, uh, she came to my show, and then um, uh, I spent the whole show at Lounge at the End of the Universe just talking to Darcy. Um I should point out, while I was just talking to Darcy during my whole show, two girls in the front row were making out with each other (laughs) the entire time trying to get my attention. And uh, I didn't acknowledge them at all. I just kept talking to Darcy. And it felt so good just talking to her during the show that I got off stage and, you know, talking to people, whatever. And then Darcy finally makes her way over. And I said, I go, did you have fun? And she goes, yeah. I was like, well, thank you for coming out. She goes, yeah, that was really, you know, thanks for inviting me. And I said... Hey, can I get your phone number? And she goes, "Why?" <laughs> I go, "Well, I wasn't prepared for that at all." I went, uh, "I want to call you." And she goes, "For what?" And I go, I, "To talk to you." I don't know. Talk, and she goes, uh, yeah. "Super reluctant." 
<laughs> and yeah. it was weird. It was weird. But then we started talking, yeah. and we talked for months. And here you are, three years later. Three years later. Three plus. Three plus, yep. Three years <laughs> later. So January 11th is the... Should we... <laughs> It's, you it's want an, to so bad, God. January 11th is the anniversary of Darcy and I dating. So when you come out, maybe I could, how about this? Come out to the Egyptian. I'll go out and I'll just talk about you. <laughs> and then you come out and do a rebuttal. How about that? Okay. All right. Yeah. This, I love this show. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. We will definitely be there. Uh, we want to make sure, too, that people follow Darcy on social media because you're an incredibly talented Aww. artist and amazing tattooist and uh, deserve all the credit for what you've done here in this town. Uh, how can people find you as well? Uh, at Darcy Nutt with two T's um, on Instagram. Beautiful. And you should follow because it's great. She's doing tattoo shows all over the country and then also uh, sets up shop here and is amazing at what she does. So uh, we always appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for coming in. We will have those tickets. Grab them now to see Craig Gass at the Egyptian Theater on January 11th. And anytime you guys want to come in, you're welcome. You know that. Getgas.com. Getgas with two S's.com for the tickets. And yes, Darcy is awesome. Yes. <laughs> Morning After with Nick and Big J. That's it for us. We'll see you guys on Monday. It's the X-Rocks. Hi.